Welcome to Miss Chow's biology class. Today we're going to start on the unit of cell division and the first part will be on the cell cycle. The objective is that students will be able to understand the why the cell cycle divides and the cell cycle itself. Here we have a picture of onion cells stained with iodine. You clearly see the cells membranes with the cell walls and the nucleus. Cells have a life cycle similar to all living things. Um, so all cells arise from pre-existing cells. Basically in order to get cells you have to get from something living. You can't just take a piece of rock that is not living and get life out of it. So let's first talk about cell size. Here is in within the human body, the smallest cell available, which is the sperm, and the largest size available is the human egg. So, what about how is it regulated? It's regulated by the cell membrane, nutrients that it requires, so you have to have enough food to sustain itself. The nucleus, which is the brain that tells it how big one should get the cell size. So what about the larger size? The larger cell is the axon of a giant squid, which is about 43 feet in the female. And here's a picture of a cartoon rendition of axon, which is a nerve cell. And this is what tentacles of a giant squid would look like. And the smallest cell, huge comparison to the giant squid is the mycoplasma bacterium which is about 10 micrometers which you probably you would need a microscope in order to see it let's go ahead and talk about how our cells so small here we have a picture of a, I believe a dendrite you can see the shape of the cell with its nucleus when it's small it has enough surface area to maintain itself so what I'm trying to say is that the cell, the surface area of the cell, the outside, has to be greater than the volume it contains because the surface area helps regulate the nutrients going in and the waste going out. So the surface area has to be greater than the volume it contains. It is larger the cell, the more nutrient it needs and the waste it uses. So it can't get too big, otherwise it can't sustain itself. So why should one divide? There are three main reasons to grow repair and reproduce. We need cells to grow bigger. Similar to this orange dahlia, when it's not blown. When it blooms, the uh, leaves and petals will need more cells to grow bigger and bigger. We need cells to repair injuries and replace dead dying cells. So, for instance, we have this starfish here. The starfish has the ability to regenerate one of its limbs cut, same as a skink. Um, it's a type of lizard. Uh, the tail is blue. When it's in danger, it will literally drop its own tail as a decoy and run off from a predator. So we need cells to reproduce another body part, just like the starfish or the skink, or produce an offspring, like this picture of a nine-week-old embryo. There are three types of cell division, binary fission, mitosis, and meiosis. Asexual reproduction, asexual means without sex. The genetics of daughter cells are identical to a parent, so they're like clones. And an example of that would be bacteria. In bacteria, there are three types of bacteria, categorized as three types, bacilli, coccidae, and spirelli. They go through process of reproducing itself through binary fission, which are three steps. Um, the eukaryotic yeast also go through binary fission as a way of reproducing itself. First what happens is that the DNA replicates, and the DNA, since it's very simple and the genome is not as big, the DNA is a circular structure. Then the chromosomes will segregate the month cells, and then the cell itself will segregate, will separate. In sexual reproductions, which requires another mate, 
The genetic of the daughter cells is a combination of the two parent cells. So here we have two mating dragonflies as an example of sexual reproduction. And because of these a species are more complex, they have a larger genome, so they have multiple chromosomes, quite different than in asexual production where their genome is much smaller in a circular form. The cells will go through duplication, and um, that is a process in which happens in sexual cells of meiosis. Now the third type of cell division we're going to talk about in the next series is mitosis. That is cell replication that happens in somatic cells, basically non-sexual cells, and that goes through called mitosis. As a review, again, there are three types of cell division. The first type is asexual cell um, re replication called binary fission, three steps, DNA replication, chromosome segregation, and then finally cytokinesis. Then, for somatic cells, they will replicate themselves called mitosis. And next to it is meiosis, where it happens with sexual cells that are used in sexual reproduction. Here, we'll talk about that in the third series. So how do cells divide? There are two main phases, interphase and mitosis slash cytokinesis. In interphase, the growth and preparation for cell is growth and preparation for cell division. They make proteins for DNA replication. And there are three stages. So if you look at this diagram here, the first stage, it, the whole entire interface itself happens about 90% of the time. NG1, it's short for GAP1, that is where the cell does most of its growth, metabolism, and cell maintenance. In S phase, which stands for synthesis, the DNA condenses and organizes into chromosomes. The DNA is coiled into thicker strands. Then the thicker DNA itself is coiled around histone proteins to form chromatin. So here, DNA is coiled around to thicker parts, then the coiled DNA is coiled around the histone proteins, and then two together, chromatin is then later foiled, coiled into chromosomes. So here, the histones together will form chromatin, and then later it will coil into chromosomes. Chromatin is condensed DNA with histone proteins. Histone proteins are proteins used to organize DNA by coiling around it. The chromosome duplicates. Then one sister chromatid will duplicate to formulate sister chromatids. So here you have a chromosome. The number one will indicate that one side is a chromatid. Sister chromatids are duplicates of the same chromosome. So here in green you have a single chromatid, or we could say chromosome. Then they will double itself and form sister chromatids. When the two chromatids connect, it will connect through a thing called centromere to form a chromosome. So, then, in to identifying a chromosome, they have two main parts, short arm versus long arm, basically what part of the X shape is short and long, and those are shown in um, numbers 3 and 4. The third phase is G2, gap 2. In gap 2, the cell prepares itself for mitosis by making duplicates of its organelles.
The animal cells have centrioles that also duplicates. In mitosis is the last step afterwards. Basically, in mitosis, the chromosomes, which are cystic chromatids, are duplicated and forms two nuclei. And then finally, the last step of that will be cytokinesis, where the cytoplasm divides and the cell produces two daughter cells. In the next instructional video, I will talk about the process of mitosis. Now, remember, in mitosis, uh, as a quick overview, you start off in prophase, where it's together, metaphase, they line up, anaphase, they come apart, and pull apart, and telophase is when they start forming close to two cells, and then finally cytokinesis snaps the two together. watching